Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about adding images and figures to our HTML5 documents. So let's go ahead and start with the image or IMG element. And just to remind you, we're looking, looking at a version of the specification called HTML5 Edition for Web Authors. And I'm just going to scroll down to remind us that we're searching on the table of contents. I'm going to hit Control F on my keyboard to bring up the Find toolbar. I'm going to type in the IMG, and that'll bring us to a section of the table of contents specifically related to the image. Notice that unlike many of the elements that we've looked at up to this point, there's a lot to the image as we can see clearly from the uh, the amount of the indentation levels, the amount of content uh, that is uh, contained inside of the IMG element. But let's go ahead and just open it up in a new tab. Uh, it you can see there are a number of attributes that are specific to the IMG control like the alt and the source and we'll talk about those in just a moment. Um, in its basic form you simply need uh, the following to define an image. Uh, so the IMG source attribute equals and then uh, the alt attribute equals. So it simply has two requirements, a valid source attribute that points to an image file using a URL, and then an alt attribute which describes the image for those who can't process image or those who have uh, image loading disabled. So here again, a nod to screen reader software for those who have limited or no vision capabilities. The alt value would be read aloud in these cases describing the content of the image to that person uh, that's uh, visually impaired. There are other optional attributes allowed in HTML5 including a width and a height for example allowing you to specify the images width and height in pixels. Now here's where the presentation overlaps with semantic meaning. I would recommend that you handle the sizing of your images purely in CSS. However you're going to see plenty of people defining image elements with width and height and certainly it is allowed. Sometimes if the image can't be loaded for some reason, an empty placeholder will be represented by um, kind of a, uh, a, a large box with a, a little icon in the upper left hand corner with a little X through it. And uh, if you have the width and the height, then it will use that uh, to size that empty box appropriately uh, so there is a pragmatic rationale to their existence because it might help with the formatting of the rest of the page if that image, if you're relying on the size of that image to help format uh, the rest of the page relative to that image. Um, but I still think despite that advantage you should opt to keep things semantically clean and keep all your presentation information including the size of the images in your cascading style sheets okay and we'll show how to do that much later now with regard to the source attribute you can set it to any valid URL that resolves to an image file and the same rules that we talked about in lesson 5 about URLs apply here as well uh, so I'm not going to take the time to reiterate them it's common to keep all images in a separate folder for easy management, something like slash images or slash creative. Just keep in mind then that most likely you'll see something like this whenever you're looking at other people's source code. So src attribute equals images slash my.gif or source equals uh, dot dot slash, remember that means go to the parent directory, and then the images directory my.gif, okay? Now moving on, in some cases we want to use an image in an academic context where it's important to annotate the source or provide a caption and then reference the specific image or textual resource like a table or a quote in a paragraph. In those cases you can use uh, the figure. So let's go ahead and look at the figure element and open that up. And since I'm right here, I'm going to go ahead and open up the fig caption as well, since we'll talk about that in just a moment. So if you take a look at, first of all, uh, you can see the figure element represents some flow content optionally with a caption that's self-contained. It's typically referenced as a single unit from the main flow of the document. Uh, it can be used to annotate illustrations, diagrams, photos, code listings, and so on that are referred to from the main content of the document, but that could, without affecting the flow of the content, be moved away from the primary content. Uh, for example, to the side of the page, to dedicated pages, or to an index. All right, and so I think um, a good example of that, I think they have one here. Okay, so you can see on screen that I have a... Uh, uh, a snippet out of an HTML page 
with uh, image source equals welcome.jpg, and then I create a fig caption, uh, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But the figure is the collection of the image itself as well as a caption uh, in the fig caption. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We already had the web page open. You can see the fig caption represents a caption or legend for the rest of the contents of the fig caption element's parent figure element. So basically just a caption or a legend for the contents inside or in the remaining portion of the figure that's apparent to the fig caption. All right. In this case, we just happen to have something called a caption for the image. And then I have uh, some small copyright information as well. Uh, so a figure is used to include photos, illustrations, code diagrams, listings, and so on without affecting the flow of the document. It can be moved to its own web page or it can be moved away from the place where it's referenced. Um, and so if you take a look on this page, uh, you can see in this example uh, uh, a another uh, example of where it's used with code. Here we have a figure that includes um, code, and we have a caption that calls it "Listing for the Primary Code Interface API Declaration." All right, so that's a an interesting way to use it. And the fig caption element represents a caption or a legend for the rest of the contents inside the figure, just like we see here. Okay, so besides working with simple images, we also talked about figures and captions in this lesson. Uh, let's keep moving forward. This is a very simple concept. Let's not spend more time on it than we need to. In the next lesson, we're going to work with uh, lists and other groupings of content. We'll see you there. Thank you.